Greetings tankers, I'm Ikebu and today it's time for another episode of Getting to Grips where I'll cover the Halloween Mirami 13 game mode, what it's all about and how it will work. Make sure to like and subscribe to get notified for more of these videos and give us your feedback about the video by commenting below. The game mode is a 5 man PvE event where you can play as a team of 5 people through solo random matchmaker or by queuing in platoons of 4 to 5 people to take on the fearsome AI whose sole task is to ensure you have no treats this Halloween. The goal is to progress through as many phases as possible and collect as much substance called Mirmium as you can. I strongly suggest that you platoon to get the best out of this mode. You can join the official EU World of Tanks Discord and look for platoons using the dedicated voice channels to communicate more effectively. You get 3 free event battles per day using special event tanks. Your initial choice is the mobile autoloader Hornet, the high DPM and all around Cerberus or the Bruiser Heavy Goliath. You can get 2 additional elite tanks by completing the missions or spending gold in the event store. These 2 elite tanks are slightly more mobile medium at the cost of DPM Malachite and the very fun HE Derp light tank the Grenadier. The commanders of these vehicles can be leveled with Mirmium you collect during the battle. The higher their level, the more event coins you can earn per level that is achieved. This progress is much faster at higher difficulties and when you apply boosters, the coins will come quickly. You can either buy these in the event store or by doing random and event missions. At the end of each battle, you need to heal your commander due to taking part in such dangerous mission. You can do this by either waiting for the daily server restart or you can spend credits of increasing value based on the number of heals you've done that day. The first being 25,000, the second 75,000, third 135,000 and finally the fourth heal and onwards will cost 225,000. This is regardless of which commander you have healed previously. Alternatively, you'll be able to win or purchase special items called stimulants that will heal your commanders. You can earn additional daily stimulants by completing random missions. It's important to note, stimulants will increase the cost as well, so I suggest you only use them for the fourth heal onwards where possible. Now is a good time to discuss difficulty. There are three levels of difficulty for the casual, serious and hardcore players among you. Everyone starts with the normal game mode and will unlock the medium difficulty with two wins in the normal mode and the hardest with wins on the medium difficulty. While the easy mode will only have three phases, the medium and hardest difficulty will have four phases, with higher mirroring requirements to progress through the phases. To get to the next phase in the game, you need to get the collector up to 100% of mirroring to open the portal. The more phases you complete by collecting more mirroring, the more rewards you can earn. Don't worry if you fail in your team though, the better you perform, the more matter or mirroring you will earn towards the event objective. Now for the progression part of this event. Your commanders will have levels. Every time you level up by earning 1500 XP, you will earn coins. There will be no limit to the levels you can earn on your commanders, and you will earn 9 coins per level once you get to level 5 and beyond. You can improve the speed of your commanders XP earning by collecting more matter into the collector. The more you farm, the more that goes towards boosting your commanders level. Additionally. You can activate a booster before the battle that will multiply XP earned by 2 and you can purchase these separately. Many of you will be asking by now, what's this matter for? Or Mirumium, what are the coins for etc? Well the game will have an event store where you can purchase various cool items. You'll be able to buy new and special 3D styles at the cost of 25 coins each that will come with a commander as a gift. And you can buy personal reserves, directives for different prices and you can even buy some training manuals. You also need to make sure you put consumables on your tanks and will be integral to success of your matches. Though there are plenty to suit each playstyle, I can tell you my personal top 3 are the field repairs for hit points and fires, the shield for when you are in real trouble and then the speed boost that you can combine with the shield to ram things or to use to get away from the big bad boss as quickly as possible and deliver Mirmium to the collector before the time runs out. Now, let's talk about what you're up against and how to deal with each of these AI. First, the guard tanks, a basic enemy with normal behaviour. Just do what you need to do to take it down, but don't waste too much time on these 
and are usually good to ram, but these can be quite vicious in groups when they surround you, so try to attack in packs and don't get yourself surrounded. Depending on the difficulty, they can appear as the following, a Churchill, Sherman, Pershing, Churchill Black Prince, a Patton or even a Carnarvon. Next up, there is a Rabbit or a Runner, recognisable as the Lux. This is a fast tank but weak enemy that tries to escape and lure players into stronger AI. These can drop a lot of Mirmium when they are destroyed, so if possible wipe these out quickly to not lose out and don't let them get too far away. Light tanks be warned though, these do bite back and will take advantage of your low armour and do some serious damage. Don't chase for too long or get caught in a trap and definitely don't accidentally follow them off the map like some people do. Like me. Now you've got the Hedgehog, the fast kamikaze tank that tries to ram into players and explode. Be warned if you let them get too close and you shoot them, they have been known to still do some damage. This is where the shield really comes in handy in case you're unable to dodge, duck, dip, dive and dodge or even perform a barrel roll. Activate the shield and just sit there and let them come at you. Hunter tanks will spawn as either a Panther 2, E50 or an E50M and like a poppy it will follow you like you have treats until you give it what it wants. It's important to keep an eye on your minimap. These will spawn randomly when you activate spawn locations and try to sneak up behind you and use their devastating HE shells. Just keep moving, be hard to hit and avoid letting them hit your light tanks especially. Believe me when I say it hurts. Now you have the Mosquito, a static AI that will have a laser beam highlighting where and who it's aiming at. Simply get around the back of it to help you not take too much damage and this is not a high priority target so make sure you just keep moving, stay out of danger and don't let it aim at you. But it will hurt you if you stay stationary too long and let it get an easy shot at you. Next up is the Alpha AI. This is where the AI starts having an attitude. These tanks will be harder hitting and have way more hit point than the normal guards. On the highest difficulty, these can even appear as an FE 4005. So you have been warned. And finally, the Immortal, an indestructible enemy with huge damage and a fire aura that steals your Mirmium until you run out. And then it sets your tank on fire. This is a simple to deal with AI. You don't go near it. You don't even look at it in a funny way. You just keep your distance, don't engage with it, and when you see it, just run. Avoid getting into any engagements while it's nearby, as it will make things more difficult, such as picking up the Mirmium at the drops, and sometimes this is the cause of people wiping. First, choosing your tank. I strongly suggest either the Hornet or the Cerberus for the easy difficulty. The Goliath is okay but it's a little bit slow and does not gain much until you play high difficulties. If you have lots of gold that you want to spend, you can instead choose to purchase the Grenadier or and the Malachite. The Grenadier is probably the most fun of the five vehicles and is capable of one-shotting the AI with some careful aiming. The Auxiliary Bundle will help you progress faster, but you can get the tanks and the stimulants and even the boosters by doing missions. For high difficulties, you want to avoid having too many light tanks on the team, with hunters and their HE shells, the mosquitoes with their high damage, and even rabbits will do damage at higher tiers, and even the normal guards will have high hit points and damage. Altogether, this will make playing the light more difficult and prone to having mistakes punished very quickly. Your consumables are going to be the make or break of your team. My top 3 favourites for easy difficulty are the Shield, Repair and Speed Boost. Shield and Speed Boost makes your tank able to do immense ramming damage on your medium tank and light tanks. The repairs give precious hit points and will also put out those annoying fires. Anomalies are going to also vastly improve your chances of success. Always be on the lookout for yellow orbs and pick them up when you can. Avoid getting destroyed because when you respawn you do not get them back. Teamwork is mandatory in Mirmi 13, stay in packs and try to constantly use the battle communication system to organise the route towards the collector. The only time you should avoid a direct line is if the immortal is in your way or jumps you at the start, but you should quickly find a more direct path towards the Magnus. Remember, it may only be 15 seconds to get to there, 
but it's another 15 seconds back, plus the fighting time. Many teams have failed by not taking the Immortal seriously or planning a clear route. One important thing to also remember, in order to pick up Mirmium, you need to have done damage to that particular AI. You will not be able to pick up Mirmium from targets destroyed by teammates that you have not tagged. Now, if your teammates look like they're going to struggle to get to collecting time, just make sure you have enough Mirmium collected and get at least one person on the collector before the timer runs out. At least your team will progress to the next phase. Anyone who explodes will respawn on 50% hit points and will have lost their anomaly buffs, but it's better than instantly failing there. Remember, leave yourself enough time to deliver the Mirmium itself at the collector. It's very easy for you to mistake the delivery rate and end up losing out by a few seconds. If your teammates do unfortunately sacrifice themselves for the greater good of the loot, try to kite the immortal away and then come back and hoover up what they've dropped. Otherwise, you're likely to not have enough resources to get to the next phase. Additionally, try to make sure you don't leave any anomalies uncollected. These buffs can be huge. Once you're in phase two and beyond, you will start seeing those different varieties of AI, like the rabbit who do drop nice sums of Mirmium, so pop them as soon as they spawn and lessen the time collecting Mirmium on other collection points. Remember that one of the biggest and most important things to notice from phase two onwards is that little bar just above your minimap. If you see that getting full, run the other way. Do not stop, do not pause, and do not collect 200. Just go the opposite way of the big bad that's about to try and bully you. The immortal will follow you around the whole game, so try to keep some nice distance and when possible, avoid engaging AI spawns with the immortal nearby. It very rarely ends well and is especially problematic on the two and three star difficulties. Remember not to stray too far away from the collector, or you will run out of time and fail the event. Don't be afraid to collect surplus Mirmium as it carries over into the next phase, giving yourself and your team a better chance of progressing. But don't waste too much time doing this. If things look like they're going wrong, make sure at least one person with enough Mirmium is on the collector to progress to the next phase or win the game. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this useful towards your Mirmium collecting adventures. Again, if you like this video, give a like. If you don't, please comment below. And if you want to get notifications for more World of Tanks videos, make sure you subscribe. And I'll see you on the battlefield.